Hello and welcome. This is the Astrology of the Week Ahead podcast. I'm your host, Chani Nicholas. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the Astrology of the Week of November 20th, which is a mixed bag. All right, y'all. The sale of the season has arrived. For the next week, you can get up to 70% off our best-selling astro offerings at Chani.com while supplies last. Y'all, this week starts out super powered. It starts out wanting to help us make some big leaps and bounds. There is a mark of success at the beginning of this week and also like a mark of deep determination and an ability to get things done and to go into like a pretty significant process, which could be helpful in terms of getting in touch with our own power, our own drive, our own resilience, our own energy, and putting it to use in a particular area of our life, which is phenomenal because the second half of the week does not look so supportive. Now, I don't think planets make us do things. I don't think planets are the cause of what happens here on Earth. I think that the sky is this beautiful mirror that we can use and the reflection that it gives tells us something about where we are in the year, like where we are in time. And it gives us a sense of the quality of time that we're moving into. So the beginning of the week has a quality to it that feels really supportive and successful. Or the beginning of the week looks like we are making some big strides forward. So I want us to focus on what we can actually get done, what we can make strides towards in the beginning of the week. I want us to think about the beginning of the week as our ability to do the things we want to do. And it looks like we get supported in doing so. And then by the time the sun moves in to Sagittarius on Wednesday, the 22nd of November, we are in a different storyline. By Wednesday, November 22nd, we're in a little bit of a cautionary tale. And if you've been with me over the past couple weeks, I have been talking about this period of time as one where I highly recommend not overdoing things. I highly recommend not putting too much on our plate. I highly recommend getting very, very, very concentrated on the necessary things that we need to do, our priorities. I highly recommend thinking about life in a kind of essentialist way, like what is essential for me to do and what is not. And that's because the second half of the week into the weekend feels like a little bit of a traffic jam. You know, when life just starts coming at you and then it comes at you and then it keeps coming at you and you're like, wow, I didn't know there were going to be so many things that were going to pile up. Kind of like when you're trying to get across town in traffic. It's not impossible. It just requires a lot of extra time and also patience. I mean, you don't have to be patient, but then you're going to like burn out your energy and your cortisol. And that's what the last part of this week is for some of us. For others of us, it'll feel like we've just kind of energetically stalled. So some of us will feel like, oh my goodness, I've got so much to do and not feel like. Some of us will experience the later part of this week like, wow, I have so much to do and I did not necessarily give myself the time to do it. Note to self, need to time manage better. And some of us will experience the end of this week like a feeling of lethargy or not being able to quite focus on something. And this is the astrology of it. This is why I'm saying it. The sun moves into Sagittarius on the 22nd and immediately squares Saturn on the 23rd. And then Mars moves into Sagittarius on the 24th and then squares Saturn on the 25th. Now in astrology, Mars and Saturn are the two like tough cookies of our little solar system. And they teach us lessons that are really important. Nothing is wasted, but they're just not the most fun to learn. So fine. We've got to learn some lessons this week that maybe won't be so joyful. Definitely lessons around boundaries. Definitely lessons around how to 
move through obstacles in the most productive, patient, but diligent and kind of like dogged way. There's something that's out in front of us. And it, again, it could feel like a energetic low or it could feel, could be that there's too, just too many things going on. And I say, keep saying too many things because the sun and Mars and Saturn are all going to be in what we call mutable signs. And mutable signs are everywhere all at once. And they're about variety usually, or they're at least about doing two things at the same time, which is literally impossible, but trust a mutable sign can try to do it, at least try to do it. And so when there's problematic astrology or astrology that looks a little challenging to our lives, and it's in mutable signs, it can be kind of challenging in multiple ways. And the sun and Mars are going to be in a fire sign in Sagittarius. And that's really loud and active and also a little dramatic, definitely gets our attention. And so the issues that are going to come up this week are ones that are going to be really obvious. And this is good for one reason, maybe a couple, but definitely one. We want to know what the problem is. And a Mars-Saturn square or a challenging Mars-Saturn aspect will always point out the problem. It'll never be shy. It will never be like, oh, don't worry about it. I got this. It'll be like, this is the issue. This is what's wrong. This is the stop sign. This is the collision. This is the, like, this is the the place where the energy got stuck. This is the situation that could not move forward. And this is why. So again, for some of us, it'll just feel like we've got too much on our plate. I want you to take the small moments of rest that you can. And again, just take note of if you're taking on work that doesn't have to be taken on. If you're taking on other people's responsibilities, why are you doing that? If you're taking on things that don't need to be taken on this week, then definitely think about pushing it on the calendar a little bit. Just don't try to do it all this week if it doesn't need to get done. Stick to what's essential. Stick to what is needed. And take note of the harsher, harder lessons. And maybe they're not so fun to learn, but what are they teaching you about the issues at hand? What boundaries are you learning to set? And What obstacles are you learning to be resilient in the face of? And what obstacles are you refusing to keep you stuck? And it's a hefty kind of, you know, uh, price for entrance. But at the end of the day, it's usually a good one. And this is a setup that might even relate to something that happened back in the summer or back a couple months ago. But either way, it's a setup that isn't going to last forever. It definitely will be felt as of, again, Wednesday, and definitely by Friday, definitely Saturday. And then it will linger, but it will fade over the coming days. I do want to point out, though, that we're having a full moon on Monday, the 27th of November. And that full moon is in Gemini, which is the other mutable sign the other mutable sign, another mutable sign. And that full moon is in this configuration. So this podcast just takes us to Sunday, but come back next week and we'll talk about the Monday of it all because that full moon in Gemini on Monday, the 27th of November is also a many faceted situation. And it will be curious and it will be lively and it'll be chatty. But there's also this feeling of consequences or this kind of motif of consequences that is hanging out over the course of the later part of this week and into next week. And just know that through the weekend, we're building towards a full moon. And so Monday is the peak of it. But we're going to be feeling that like heightened energy throughout the weekend and probably noticing, again, a kind of increase of, I don't know if it's chaos, but it's definitely uh, a lot of different things going on at once that need our attention. And perhaps, you know, it's Saturn, so it might be a lot of different responsibilities that come up at one time. And it's hard to pick between them, but we've got to 
make sure that we're doing our due diligence with as many responsibilities as are on our plate and are urgent at the moment. And that's the thing. It's just like Mars Saturn makes everything feel urgent and you've got to be very conscientious about not buying into that if it's not what's actually happening. All right, y'all. Really important to know where this Mars Saturn square is happening in your chart. You can go to the Chani app if you're not already there and listen to your reading for the week and take note of what house Sagittarius falls in and what house Pisces falls in in your chart because these will be the two parts of your life that will really be going through this refining and defining process. And you can also read your horoscope for Mars and Sagittarius and that will give you a pretty good understanding, even the Sun and Sagittarius horoscope too, either in the app under the current sky section of the app or on our website, Chani.com. Hey y'all, thank you so much for leaving us reviews in the app store. I wanted to leave you with this one called, I'm not even sure I can find good enough words. This app has changed me. For starters, it has made me crave Monday mornings, which I would have never thought possible, but it has also infused my life with such routine doses of beauty, grace, and intentionality. In many ways, this app reflects how I hope to live my own life. The Chani team has my endless gratitude for extending to us the love that is evident on this platform. Cheers to us journeying together. Sending you so much love. Many blessings. Be easy on yourself this week. Go slow when you can. You know, like sometimes you have to go slow to actually go fast. So slow down to take note of the little shortcuts that might be open, the little openings that might reveal themselves, and the way forward, even when it looks a little too compact to get through. Bye for now.